Today I'm starting my biggest project to date, which is the Life Action Cinderella Ball Gown Dress. Now, I've been wanting to do this dress for a very long time, but it just takes so much fabric and knowledge in sewing, but I finally think that I'm ready to take it on, and although I'm incredibly nervous to do it, I'm also very excited. Now the most daunting part of this whole thing, to me in my opinion, is the petticoat. So that is what I'll be tackling first. So in this box, I have about 60 yards of fabric that I bought. Originally when I bought it, I thought it would be for the entire dress. But after doing some research into the petticoat itself, I think that it's all going to go towards that. And I'm going to have to buy more fabric for the actual dress because I don't even know if this will be enough. I want to say I bought about 40 yards of fabric for the frills, all crystal organza, and I'm going to be making strips of 7 inches. For the base of this petticoat, I just made a simple half circle skirt that I put over my hoop, and also under my hoop I have a bustle so that it changes the shape a bit to get the accurate shape of the dress in the movie. So I'm working on the frills for the petticoat right now. And I'm very proud of how I've been doing this. So I have been adding fishing line into the hems, which is giving it a really good shape. Um, and I've never done this before, and so I think it's turning out very well. I have some done over there. I don't know if you can see them. Um, but yeah, and right now I'm working on gathering them and I actually think I'm pretty clever with how I'm doing this. So normally when I gather fabrics, I use the method where you sew two lines of long stitches and then you pull on the bobbin thread to get it together. But I really didn't want to do that on this because as you can see, the fabric is not very finely woven and I knew it would fray a lot. Oh, and by the way, these are cut on the bias, so already I've minimized a lot of the fraying. But anyway, I've come up with a different way to do this, and I really don't know if it's done, been done before or if this is a common way to do things and I just never knew about it, but I was playing around with my machine and I came up with this way to gather it. So what I do is I hold on up here to the thread and have some tension. And so as I'm sewing right here, it gathers up because of the tension I'm creating. And so this has saved me a lot of time and I'm really proud of it. Um, it's just cut a lot of time out of the making of this petticoat. So for the next layer of my petticoat, I'm doing something that I saw Bella May do on her petticoat of this dress, which she posted that video a few months ago and I've been referring to it a lot. I'll put it in the description box, but anyway, she takes a very long rectangle of fabric. Mine is about 36 inches by 200 inches. Um, she puts two ruffles on either end. And then what happens is she folds it over and attaches it to the top up here like this. So that's what I'm going to do. And it should add a lot of extra volume to this petticoat. So I've been playing around with the draping of this and I love where it's going. It's starting to look really poofy and this really isn't even halfway done yet. I just have it plunged and pinned in place right now, but I love how it is turning out. And here is the side view of it. It's just turning out so good and so poofy. I've been working on this for a couple of days now and I just finished the third layer which is these go days i've never done these before and when i sew i really just wing it so i was not mathematical with this at all i kind of just went with it and i think it ended up really good they're not perfect but i am getting the volume i want so i'm gonna do another layer of them and they're gonna be a bit longer and wider so i forgot to finish filming the rest of the making of the petticoat but this is it I also have the next layer of skirt over it right now back there, so just ignore that. But I'll talk you through what I did to finish it. After adding those smaller godets right there, I added another layer of bigger ones, just with some excess fabric I had. And then I added three ruffles to the bottom of it. And each layer, I tried to add at least three ruffles. Then I added an entire skirt layer with three ruffles to the bottom. And finally, we have the top layer, 
which is another full skirt with ruffles attached to the bottom. What's funny about this dress is that my cats have been loving hanging out under it. It's like a little fort for them. It's really nice in here for them and they love it so much. But now I'm gonna move on to making the top layers of the skirt. So now I'm working on the first layer of the real skirt and I'm using this iridescent fabric. I got this from Joann's and originally I had planned to do a circle skirt with it, but when I got it, the width of it was not 60 inches, but 45. So I had to change my plans a bit and make it a paneled skirt, which is not what I wanted to do, but it's going to work, I hope. Also, I had to buy a new machine because I just really wore this one out. It was already a hand-me-down and it just was not working quite well. So I'm working with this new one right here. Okay, so although I did not film it, I do have two of the underskirts done now. Here is the iridescent one that I was working on that I had to panel. And I love how it turned out. It really adds an extra special something to the dress. And then I also have this organza one, which I got from Joann's. And this is a three quarter circle skirt because I didn't have enough for a full one. And I really love it. It's kind of shimmery. It's hard to tell on the camera, but now I only have two left. I have a lilac -y one to do and then one with that fabric, but I had to dye this fabric a bit darker because it's not quite the right color that I need. So I'm working on the overskirt right now and I am just cutting out panels which I'm going to sew together and hopefully it will make a really gathered skirt. But the panels just look like this and I just cut as many out as possible with the amount of fabric I have and then I'm going to go through and dye it like I said to a different shade so that it's more accurate to the film. Before I start dyeing all of the fabric I have I'm going to do a test swatch and I'm just using this color and I'm hoping that if I just use a small amount that I will dye this just a couple shades darker to the shade that I need. Um, like everything with sewing, I really am not mathematical or anything like that. So I really just wing it and I kind of add it till I think it's right. And I just keep it in there as long as I think is necessary. And I just kind of do tests until I figure out what works for me. So this shade of dye did not work for me and I actually had to go to the store and buy two different colors. I probably did about five different tests with that other color and it just was not working out, but I'm finding a lot more success using these two new colors and I'm getting a better shade than the other one. After four more tests, it was time to start the real dye process. In order to get the right color formula, when I switched over to a bigger dye bath, I took a sample of the test dye and I put it into this little jar. And that way I have the right color and I can kind of match it when I'm putting dye in the real thing. And it just is the easiest way for me to do things so that I don't have to measure out and do ratios. So dyeing this fabric ended up being a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. There was just too many mess ups, so many things of dye that I went through, but I think I finally figured it out, so I'm gonna start rhinestoning. I got my rhinestones off of Amazon, and although there are many sizes, I'm trying to use just the smaller ones. And I'm also using this glue pen that I got at Hobby Lobby, and I'm just placing dots of glue randomly across the fabric, and then I'll put a rhinestone over it, and it seems to be working. With the rhinestones complete, I sewed all of the panels together and then I gathered them into one waistband.
Now before I move on with the video, I just wanted to address something that has been coming up in my social media comments a lot and I just wanted to get it out of the way because it's kind of been bugging me. So in almost every single video that I post about this dress, the comments that come up are things like it's not the right color and it needs to be darker and just everything like that and I don't really agree with them nor do I think that it's true. Now when you look at the pictures that we do have of this gown, you'll notice that at every single one the dress is just a different color whether it be darker or lighter and this could be because of the fact that they created many different dresses with different variations depending on if they needed this skirt to be shorter or longer or things like that and it also could just be the lighting of pictures or the effects that they put on in the movie and yes there are very many different versions where it is darker than my dress but there's also many different pictures where it's actually lighter if you look at pictures we have where it's been seen in museums or whatnot it's almost like a grayish blue and it's very very light whereas if you look at pictures or screenshots from the movie it's a much darker hue so i kind of chose the middle ground in between those and i think i made a color that is really good and i don't think there's anything wrong with it i just wanted to clear that up and state my case for why i made it the color i did because there are very many different versions of this dress and i just chose to go with the lighter one now that the skirts are done i moved on to draping the bodice pattern I always make my own patterns because I feel like this way I get the very best fit possible for me. So here is the first draft I have of the bodice and it's not really working that well. It doesn't close up in the back so I'm going to just extend this back one a bit further and see if it helps because right now as you can see i'm very tightly corseted and i can't really go any smaller so i'm just gonna have to make the bodice a bit bigger and here is mock-up two it does have a better fit but i really don't like the silhouette i'm getting so i think i might switch out the corset that i'm using I did make this corset specifically for this dress, but it's just really not working out and not giving me the shape that I want. And I think I have a better corset that I think will make this better. So I decided to do one more mock-up, this time with boning and with the fabric I'll be using for the base of the real thing and i need to make it smaller i switched corsets because this one gets me a better shape and with this dress i want to be as small as possible which normally i wouldn't need that but it's kind of you know it's just what i want to do with this dress so i think i'm going to have to make this mock-up smaller but i'm not going to do another mock-up i'm just gonna take what i learned with this and apply it to the real one because i don't have any more fabric that i want to work with that will work for this. So I'm just gonna go for it and hope for the best. I've cut out my pattern pieces for the real bodice and I'm just using a cotton as lining and then here's the matte satin that I had made the mock-up out of. And then I'm also going to cut some pieces of the sheer fabrics I had used for the skirt to get the real color of the dress that I'm going to base to the blue. But for right now, I'm going to put together the lining layer and then I'm going to sew in the boning channels and add the boning to that. After sewing together the lining, I hand stitched in all of these boning channels. And when I got to the last two, I had been sewing for like two hours by hand and so I tried to machine stitch them and I don't like how it turned out as much as the hand stitched ones but it will do. And I might add a few more boning channels right here and right here, but I'm going to wait and see how stable this is. But now that that's done, I'm working on basting together the top layer of the bodice. And for this, I'm going to be using this layer of light blue matte satin. And then I'm going to be adding a layer of the sheer voil that I used for the top skirt. And then I'll have two layers of this organza that I used for one of the underskirts. Now, I wasn't originally going to do a shiny fabric on the top of this bodice, 
but then looking closer at pictures of the dress, I noticed that it did have some shine to it. So I'm hoping that this will kind of achieve the effect that that one had, even though I don't know exactly what kind of fabric they used. After basting them all together, I now have sewn them together and I have the complete bodice and I have the complete bodice lining. Now I've been thinking a lot about how I want to finish the bodice because there's a lot of different ways I could go with it. And I think I'm gonna try something that I haven't done before. So what I'm gonna do is have them right sides together so that it will be like this. And then I'm just going to sew up across right here and also in the armholes and back here. And then I'm gonna flip it out and then I'll hopefully have finished armholes and a finished top and I'll just have to join these together afterwards. And then after that, I think I will add piping to the bottom edge. Hopefully this works. I've never done this method before, but I'm fairly certain it will. And I think it's the right move for this garment. Okay, I've sewn them both together. Just right here, along here, along here, along here, and down the back seam. And now I'm going to flip it inside out. Now it's inside out, or right side out, I guess, and it's not looking too good, but I'm just gonna give it a press and then I'll probably top stitch it to secure that in place. And hopefully it looks more like a top than a big blob of fabric. Well, I worked on this for about 12 hours yesterday from eight to eight, and it's finally done other than the Bertha at the top. I am really happy with it turned out. I added the piping down here I believe that on the original dress, the piping was silver, but I did not have any silver fabric, so I just ended up using the base fabric of the bodice itself, and I think it turned out pretty good. It will look good with the whole thing. And then it has a hook and eye closing, which I despise hook and eye closings. They never feel very secure to me. They're impossible for me to sew on. This is probably my biggest weakness, is sewing hook and eyes. I just can never do it. However hard I try to make it look good, it just never looks good, especially the hooks. The eyes actually look pretty good once I got the hang of them, but it does work. It fits me perfectly, so all there's left to do is add the Bertha and go through and figure out a few of these spots where I have spare threads. But other than that, it's done and I'm very excited. Also, I always appreciate when other seamstresses show the inside of their work, so I will do that too. Here's what the inside looks like. I tried to make it as nice as possible, but as you can see, some things from the hook and eyes made it look not so much like that. I need to go through and serge this seam right here, but I think it looks pretty good. Moving on to the Bertha, I cut two big ovular pieces of fabric out of this blue and an iridescent and I kind of sewed them as a tube and turned them inside out and it was basically ready to attach to the bodice. It took me quite a while to figure out how I wanted to do this Bertha and I had to redo it multiple times just because it was really difficult to get the right flowiness that it has in the movie but I think I achieved it to the best of my abilities and I do wish it was maybe a bit poofier but I really like how it turned out and because I'm smaller than my mannequin it does not close up in the back but that is totally okay and now all that there's left to do is the butterflies and this dress will pretty much be done. The butterflies are made out of acrylic paint, scrap pieces of fabric, and Mod Podge. After cutting out a butterfly outline with fabric, I go around the edges with the glue to make sure that it doesn't fray, and then I'll go with the paint and I'll just do whatever design I'm feeling, and I'll also sometimes add rhinestones. The butterflies are probably my favorite part of the dress because each one is individual and unique. When it comes to placing the butterflies, it was kind of random, but it was also intentional as I was looking at a picture of the real dress next to it while I did it. And I tried to place like the same colors where they are in the on the original and I just kind of referenced it. With that said, it is not identical. I think it just turned out absolutely beautiful and I feel like the butterflies really pulled the whole dress together. I think I made about 40 butterflies and they all ended up being put to use and I just love how delicate they look.
before I move on with the reveal of the dress, I thought I would do a little cost breakdown of how much this all cost me and also how much I would potentially commission it for because I've gotten a lot of questions on both of those topics. And although I don't think I would commission this in the future, I did just want to give that information in case you guys were wondering. Because I don't know the exact cost and I didn't really keep track, this is just a rough estimate of how much I spent on this dress, but I'm pretty sure it's accurate. And I've included everything that I wear, everything that I used, even things I already owned, just so that if you're looking to make one of these of your own, you know about how much everything would cost. So for the fabric, it was about $215. I did go on the cheaper end of fabrics because I don't have a big budget and I just went with however many yards I could get for the cheapest amount, depending on what store it was at. Um, the hoop skirt that I already owned was about $25 from Amazon. The extras, which is like the needles, the hook and eyes, the glue, the rhinestones, things like that, was about $60. Um, the thread alone is $20 bucks because it took so many spools of thread. And then the dye that I used was $25. So that total cost is about $345 in materials alone. And I guess we could just round it up to $350. And then for commission cost, I didn't really know exactly what to do with this because I didn't track how long it took me. I know it was at least 150 hours, at most 200 hours. It's just somewhere within that. And then I changed it up depending on how much I would charge per hour. So on the cheapest end of things, if it is 150 hours and I was charging $15 per hour, that would equal out to a commission cost of $2,600. On the most expensive end of things, which I would never charge this much because I wouldn't feel comfortable charging this much, with 200 hours and $20 an hour plus the materials would be 4350 so that's about how much it would cost for me to make this again for somebody else just because it did take me about a month and a half of work and it costs a lot in materials and it is a lot of effort and hard work to make this dress. With that out of the way, let's move on to the big reveal of the dress. I'm really proud of it and I hope that you like it. it and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun for me to make and I loved being able to document the whole process from start to finish and I'm incredibly proud of how it turned out. 
I think that the dress ended up wonderful and I really don't think that the camera even does it justice. Um, but I'm just really happy about it and I can't wait to photograph it and post pictures of it and share it with all of you guys. If you like this video, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe to my channel and it would be much appreciated. I also have the links to my Instagram and TikTok accounts below, so if you want to check those out, that would be great too. Once again, I hope that you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to share another project with you guys soon.